Hey, it's Luke. All right, today I want to look at this plugin called Unichannel from uh, United Plugins. And uh, full disclosure before we get started, the developers did send me a license of this for this review, but I wasn't paid or anything, and uh, they never told me you know, what to say or anything like that. So it's an unbiased, uh, unbiased review. Basically, what it is is a channel strip. And if you know channel strips, you've seen this before. If you don't know what a channel strip is, uh, you can think back at the, the, the consoles when you see a picture or a video of somebody uh, with a big console in front of them. You've got the, the fader here at the bottom, and then these are basically the buttons that are above that on each uh, on each track and uh, this basically the interesting thing about this one compared to uh, most uh, most other um, channel strips is that you can actually mix and match the the bits and pieces so usually if you've got a a console it, it's all the same console you're you're dealing with all the same you know the same thing but this one you can actually take the the console itself and then you can mix and match the EQ from a different one and the compressor from a, a yet another one or which whichever way you want to do this so um, that's sort of nice to to have just you can try different I I've noticed it's really useful with the EQ because some of these will have less less settings so if you need to do a little bit more work to it you want to be a little bit more um i don't want to say surgical about it because this isn't necessarily what you'd use for for surgical eq but it, you know you can use it for for that if you need to you can do it with uh with this or if you just need overall like this one over here has a, a low shelf which basically um if you don't know too much about eq stuff basically um this is uh this here, this one here will be the high shelf. So you're basically boosting everything above whichever frequency. So in this case, it's 360 hertz. You're boosting everything above that, but all equally. So you're not really adjusting anything. This one, so so that'll be that'll be here. So you, um, and then this one here will will give you a peak, but only one, right? So you've got you can choose. So let's say you do it at 2,000 here. Um, you're basically at 2K or whatever you're looking here. So you can boost it here or reduce it here. Actually, let's just get rid of this one. So just make it simpler. So you can boost but or, or remove, but that's all you, you know, all you can do is you have the one. So uh, on this console here, you've got a little bit more. So you've got three different peaks. You've got one for in the high end, one in, in the mids, and one in the low. Um, but you also have the high and low, uh, the high, pa uh, the high and low shelf, which are these. But you also have here the high pass uh, filter and the low pass filter. So basically, what that will be is this one here. So you're removing everything below a certain frequency, and then this here where you're removing everything above a certain frequency. So um, and when I I was starting out this was <laughs> it it still mixes me up sometimes low pass filter isn't to get rid of the lows it actually is to you're basically uh it, it's filtering uh so it's leaving in the it, you know that's what the word pass is right so it's letting uh the lows pass uh, and then you're removing the highs so this here is a, a low pass if you're let's say we just remove this completely um this is a low pass filter here. So, so yeah, so basically you're letting everything below a certain frequency go through. So the, the reason I'm showing you on, on this one, which is the EQ in, uh, in Ableton is this one. You, you don't really see, it. you can see it with the sound. If we're playing the sound, um, you can see it a little bit on the spectrum here, but, um, it's just easier to understand when you, when you actually see, see the lines. So this one's got, you know, everything built into it. Um, and these are, they're all, you know, they're all based on, on different types of consoles or inspired by uh, these consoles. So basically, if you've ever seen uh, Front DAW, which was a, uh, an older plugin from the same company, uh, it basically was this without the output. And the reason uh, a lot of people are complaining that there was no output, but uh, output output level, is uh, the output helps for for gain matching. So what happens is. Um, You'll notice from whether it's developers or YouTube videos, a lot of the time when they're running a plugin on something, it'll sound better afterwards, but uh, a lot of the time it's just louder. So let's just look at the sound here so you see exactly what I mean. So, so this is with it on. So let's say I, this is off. This is the original sound that we're working with here. But then if I turn this on, and I put it quite a bit louder. 
actually this distorting a little bit, but. So I don't know if you could tell that it's louder, so we're gonna try it without again. Um, So it's louder, but it doesn't. That doesn't necessarily mean it's better. So what happens here is we want to just match the gain. So we just want to match the gain, so so the levels are the same. So we're we're listening to the type of sound, not the how loud the sound is. Um, so. So we can do the left right arrows, which is really nice to go between presets, but this one here, so if we if we just go to the we'll just do one of these, uh so all British. So this one here, actually I should have uh explained this. The the root here is it's all the British console or the German console or the US console. Um so and then these are for, for the sounds themselves. But um so if we just just choose one at random, but then we we'll start playing around with it. And I'm gonna tell you, um, I've only been playing around with this for about 15, 20 minutes, but uh, in 10 minutes of that, I was trying to do this video earlier and I realized the sound wasn't uh, um, coming out of the uh, of, of Ableton. So um, yeah, I'm redoing, redoing this whole thing. So hopefully I don't forget anything I mentioned the first time around, but we'll never know. And uh, so yeah, so basically this here, so we were looking at the, there's a, the low shelf and the high shelf, which we were looking at, and then the high pass, low pass, and then the, the peaks. But this peak here, there's something I love about the sound. So this is one for the low end, and uh, I think you're gonna know what I mean here. So if you listen to, this sounds just flat. This one sounds like it, it's got some sound to it, but what, what I'm noticing is in the low end, uh, the actual musicality of of the sound. It, it, the sound almost has these two octaves going at once almost, but not really. But it's got this, um, you can tell the, the bass is, it's more defined. Like you can tell uh, the bass, instead of just being there, you can actually hear the, the difference in, um, each individual note in the bass. If, I, if we take it out. And that's not just from it being louder. It's it, There's something to the, the bass on uh, on this. I just love the, the sound of this. So basically what we're looking at here, and this is... Uh, This would basically be the low mid. So we're looking at 75 to 1,000. So if we're looking on here, 75 to 1K, so basically we're looking at this, which is where the, the, the thumb from the kick drum would be, and all the way up to here. So you've got you, a lot of like synthesizers will be in here. You've got the pianos. Uh, vocals will be partly in here, a little bit up here as well. But this one, I think, could add some, but I'm not even going to bother. I just noticed here there's an extra peak. I hadn't even seen this one here. So, so we've got the four, right? So we've I I thought it was three. I hadn't even seen this. Um, so basically, yeah, the low, the low mids. These will be the the mids. So almost at one k, you know, eight hundred to twelve and a half, and then and this will be uh, um, the the you know the very highs. You can go all up to twenty. All the way up to 20k so this here would give you a little bit of air if you're dealing with sibilance or whatever you're probably dealing around here um and you know reducing this if ever if ever you're noticing it's vocals and i want to do another one of these uh with vocals but uh just wanted to try this out at, at first i i just got this installed and i wanted to give it a nice look so basically so if we're looking for an aggressive sound we're looking at uh the a German console, you can tell it'll give a little bit more of a, this will be good on electric guitars, on uh, drums, if you want the drums to be, you know, crunchy. And, and uh, so let's just look through a few of these um, presets. So I'll just take them at random and uh, and go through them and see what, ooh, that's really loud. So we're going to reduce this. And that's where we're playing with the gain.
you can tell the the main thing you can tell with these things because you can tell how much it's compressing it's compressing a lot anytime this goes goes down it's basically doing the gain reduction it's bringing it all together right so and it, this does do parallel compression, which is nice. So this dry wet here. So basically what it'll do is it'll be letting the original signal in and it'll also uh, send the compressed signal in. So you can be a little bit more aggressive with your, your compression and then mix it together so you don't lose. If you've got the really aggressive compression, a lot of the time you're losing your uh, the, the attack on stuff. So if you've got the drums in, you're not feeling that punch at the beginning because it's too compressed, um, even though you can adjust it with the attack here and, and you know bring that up a little bit. But um, Let's see, so if we go to the fully compressed signal, see, that the punch is gone, right? And you can tell that first, that first little punch will go through um, because of the, the attack. If we reduce it, we might even be able to, it lets a little bit through, so, but um, yeah, it, it's obviously too, uh, too compressed, and then this one, this won't be compressed at all. So what we're looking at here, so if we blend these together, I'll go a little bit higher, just a little bit more extreme. And you'll probably, you'll want to be listening to this with headphones because um, you won't notice if you're, you're listening just on uh, laptop speakers or whatever, you won't notice the difference. But if you're listening on, uh, on good headphones or, or good monitors, you'll be noticing a difference here. So this is obviously too compressed. It's just the, the, the punch is gone, but that's where we can play a little bit. Take the release out a little bit, give it a little bit more life. But then if we're mixing the original signal in, you've got the two. So if we reduce, if we remove this, listen for the reverb. So what we're listening for is just the reverb at the end of each, each note hitting. You, you hardly hear any reverb. You've got a little bit of delay going, but, and then this one, I like what it does to the reverb. It just brings, it brings it out just a little bit longer, right? Um, and again, we're, we could match the levels just so. So this is the without, and this is with. One thing I'm noticing is it sounds a little bit, a little bit muffled. So what we're gonna do is, a, a 2K, we're gonna, there we go. Give it a little bit of, you can tell when it's on, it gives it a little bit of, a little bit of extra life. So, and one thing I noticed on here that I really like is if you remove the compressor, the, the VU meter um, just goes dark. So you can tell right away if, uh, if, if it's on or off. So I, it's just a little thing, but I find that interesting. And then here, so we were playing around with this and giving it a little bit more, what was it at, at 2k? We were giving it, um, maybe five DB. So we can do the same thing here. And, um, basically that'll be 5k. So 2k is probably somewhere around, oops, it'll be this one or the next one. Let's, and then and give it a so give it a different sound i i really like this one honestly out of <laughs> out of these eqs every time we put this on it just sounds sounds beautiful so um there's something else that uh, a couple of things that this uh, plugin specifically has uh that most channel strips like i said don't you can't really mix and match the eq the compressor and and uh and uh the the, the console itself but um, this one also has this VARM2 technology. And what uh, the theory behind that is it's basically sending out a little bit of randomness. So um, if you had five different channels, because that's how it worked with the consoles, was each channel had this own little sound. With, with analog, it, it wasn't exact. This gives it a little bit of randomness and it just helps to bring everything together. Because the theory behind these uh, a, a channel strip is you would put it on each um, each track or almost, almost each track, uh, you might even have, you might have it on the, the master and, and your, uh, your aux sends as well, but, um, your auxiliary buses or whatever. So when they're all together, it's, it's, it's supposed to sound a little bit more, um, 
coherent just just the little bit of randomness just helps bring everything everything together it's not you're not setting it you know exactly the same even if you were to have the exact same settings on each one technically each track would have a little tiny little bit of a, a difference in how it's it's processed uh, there's also an intelligent sleep function they said that um, for if there's no audio going through it uh, the plugin won't be using CPU Remember, we're gonna try my little trick here of boosting around here. Okay, so let's try. You can really tell the, it's a little bit distorted, so I might just bring it, bring it down a little bit or bring the input down or use one of these. I think we're going a little bit a little this one's got a nice little okay we're going to reduce the input so and boost the output a little bit tell this mojo button a little bit it doesn't do all it, do, it it's not like it changes the sound completely it just gives it a little bit more of a i don't know some some clarity to it all right let, let's look at a couple of these these presets and i'm sorry about the sound on here the, the levels whoa This one would be for bass. So this is the crispiness. This one I would hear, even though they say synth crispy, I would hear this would probably sound great on drums. If you if you put this on drums, you want some really crunchy, punchy drums. So that's not necessarily the sound I'd be looking for in this for the synth, but so this one's made for pads a little bit more so again this compressor is off we got some distortion going through again so This one sounds really nice. The British bus blue. I've noticed that with these, as soon as you switch to the mastering, the master bus plugins, um, they have these, I don't know, these sound amazing. I don't want to use this on everything because uh, this doesn't have the EQ on. Let's try my magic, uh, my magic setting here for this sound. See, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's just the, it just adds some musicality to that bass part of it that I just, I just love this. Anyways, so you notice it even more. That sounds beautiful. Now, one thing I didn't find here is uh how to save these uh, you can replace them you can oh here we go new and then it brings up a box here so we'll call it uh beautiful let's see what uh, so i'm assuming it puts it under here no oh it puts it right in i think i saw it here on the, the mess there we go puts it right here so I don't know if you can move them afterwards but at worst I can go and move the file <laughs> move the file over but um, so I usually uh, try I'm not sure if I can so we can replace it but we can't rename it because um, I usually try to if 
when it in plugins like this where it, it puts your presets in with the regular ones uh, i tend to name them and put my name on it so i know which ones were the original presets and which ones were mine so uh but basically yeah so we can save presets which is good because i'm loving the sound of this and you know what i'm I, I think i'm just gonna leave it there i'm gonna go play around with this a little bit more and uh i will uh i'll, I'll see you guys next time and uh, i want to do uh this plugin on a few other things like i said i want to try it on vocals i want to try it on drums uh so i'll, I'll do those some other time but uh yeah thanks for watching <laughs>